Today, we're talking about a game changer in emergency medicine, intraosseous or IO access. In the fast-paced, high-stakes world of trauma and resuscitation, quick, reliable vascular access can mean the difference between life and death. For decades, central venous catheterization has been the gold standard, but IO access is emerging as a faster, safer, and more accessible alternative, especially when every second counts. You ever imagine yourself in one of those like high pressure medical dramas, mm -hmm. you know, where every second counts and they're like racing to get a line in? Oh, yeah. Well, today's deep dive throws open the doors to that world. Okay. Emergency medicine and specifically how a technique once considered uh, almost archaic is now being hailed as a game changer. We're diving into the world of intraosseous access. Right. Or IO for short. Hmm. Joining me is an expert who's witnessed this shift firsthand. What's fascinating is how something that's been around for decades can suddenly become the go-to in critical care. So for those of us who haven't spent much time in trauma bays, can you break down what IO access actually is? Yeah. So imagine this. Instead of that scramble to find a vein in a high-stress situation, you go right to the bone marrow. Hmm. Now, I know what you might be thinking. But um, it's surprisingly elegant. Bone marrow is packed with the blood vessels and acts as a direct pipeline to the circulatory system. Okay, I'm starting to see the appeal. It's like how a tree draws water up through its trunk, even in a drought, right? Yeah. You're bypassing all the potential roadblocks and getting straight to the source. But is it really as effective as it sounds? The numbers don't lie. We're talking about an 85% success rate on the first try. Wow. And access within minutes, often even seconds. Like, when you consider the time crunch in emergency medicine, that kind of speed can literally be the difference between life and death. Yeah. I'm starting to understand why it's becoming the preferred method over traditional central venous catheterization. Yeah. But what are we talking about in terms of time saved? I mean, how much faster is IO access compared to CVC? Yeah. So we're talking minutes versus seconds. Yeah. But is that really such a big deal in those critical moments? Oh, absolutely. Every minute. And this is like... A chilling statistic, but every minute a patient in cardiac arrest goes without treatment, their chances of survival decrease by roughly 10%. So you can see how, especially in a critical care situation, that every second counts. Wow, yeah. So imagine being that medical professional in that situation, you know, struggling to get a CVCM while the clock is ticking. Right. IO access takes away that pressure, allows you to deliver those life-saving medications almost immediately. Yeah, that really puts it into perspective. I have to admit, though, the idea of going straight into the bone sounds a little intense. Are there any concerns about the safety of IO access? It's a fair question. Um, you'd think something that sounds so drastic would come with a lot of risks. But actually, studies have shown that IO access is actually safer in many cases than CVC. Mm. With CVC, you're threading a catheter through major veins, which comes with the risk of complications like a collapsed lung. Oh, wow. Or even puncturing an artery. IO access, on the other hand, has a much lower rate of these serious complications. So not only is it faster, but it's potentially safer, too. It almost sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? Well, there's always a bit of discomfort at the insertion site. But, you know, we're talking about a situation where the alternative could be far worse. Right. And honestly, the speed and effectiveness of IO access often outweigh any temporary discomfort. Plus, we're not just talking about hospital settings here. Imagine trying to get a CVC line in a moving ambulance or at the scene of an accident. Incredibly difficult. Right. But with IO access, paramedics can deliver those life-saving medications right then and there without having to wait for ideal conditions. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You're talking about a whole new level of versatility in emergency medicine. Now, I I have to ask from a purely scientific perspective, how does injecting medication into bone marrow even work? How does it reach the bloodstream so quickly? It's remarkably efficient. Remember those blood vessels packed into the bone marrow we talked about? They're called medullary sinusoids, and they act like a superhighway, basically, straight into the circulatory system. So instead of navigating through the veins and the arteries, you're taking the uh, express route, so to speak. So you're essentially bypassing the usual traffic jams in the circulatory system. Exactly. And research shows that the medication delivery through IO is comparable to IV administration in terms of speed and effectiveness. It's like the difference between taking a back road versus a major highway during rush hour. You know, you're going to reach your destination much faster by taking that less congested route. It sounds like we're on the cusp of a major shift in emergency care. 
But with any new medical technique, there's always the question of implementation. How do we ensure IO access is used safely and effectively, you know, across the board? Hmm. It's almost like, you know, ha having the latest smartphone. It's not enough to just have a device. You need to know how to use all its features. Right. So what needs to happen to make IO access the standard of care, not just this, like, amazing tool that only some people know how to use. Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head. We need to shift from thinking of IO access as a last resort and instead think of it as the go-to option in many emergency situations. Okay. And that means widespread training, of course. Right. It needs to be ingrained in medical school curriculums. Yeah. Not just an elective or like a quick workshop. So future doctors and nurses need to be as comfortable with IO access as they are with like taking a pulse or starting an IV line. Exactly. And it's not just about the initial training. Ongoing professional development is crucial, you know, simulations, refresher courses to maintain those skills. We also need to make sure that paramedics have the training and the equipment readily available. Think about how many lives could be saved if IO access was standard practice in ambulances and at accident scenes. Right. Yeah. It's um, it's mind boggling when you think about the potential impact. Are there any other like advancements on the horizon for IO access? Absolutely. We're seeing incredible innovation in this field. Faster, more efficient IO devices are constantly being developed. Research is exploring new applications for IO access, like delivering a wider range of medications or even using it for diagnostics. Oh, wow. So not only are we talking about saving lives in the present, but potentially revolutionizing emergency medicine for the future as well. Precisely. And that's what makes this such an exciting area of medicine to be a part of, you know. As we've been unpacking all of this, I can't help but think if I were ever in a life or death situation, wouldn't I want the medical professionals treating me to have every possible advantage? Mm. And wouldn't I want them to be equipped with the fastest, safest, and most effective techniques, even if those techniques seemed a bit unconventional at first glance? It's a question worth pondering. We often think of medical advancements in terms of new drugs or complex surgeries, but sometimes the simplest solutions can be the most groundbreaking. Yeah, it's a reminder that innovation can come from unexpected places and that we should always be open to challenging the status quo, mm. especially when it comes to something as crucial as emergency medicine. I couldn't agree more. Well, there you have it. A deep dive into the fascinating world of IO access, a technique changing the game in emergency medicine. It's a reminder that even in the most critical moments, there's always hope for a brighter outcome. Thanks for joining us. And as always, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep learning. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.